video, I'm going to be teaching you how to draw an oil pastel snowman. But in this one, we're going to be doing a unique perspective. So perspective means the way you look at something. And so if you can see this from the snowman, it looks like we are down below looking up at it. So it's a different kind of point of view. So that's the way we're going to work on this one. So one thing to learn when you're doing perspective or foreshortening is another way to think about this is whatever is closest to you is the biggest, which sort of makes sense here with a snowman anyways, because the bottom ball is the biggest. But because we're looking down from below, that bottom um, snowball is going to be much, much bigger than the rest. And the way we're going to show that is we're going to have it kind of fall off the edge of the page. So we're going to go maybe about halfway up your page, okay, on, the, on one side. And you're going to draw, and you can do this lightly a couple times too. You can find when you're like, you're going to draw an arc. So it's not a complete circle, like part of a circle that goes down and it goes almost to the edge of the other side of the page. Okay? So you're just going to kind of do that the best you can. Do it light. And then once you have a line that you think you like, you can just darken it up. Okay? Then you're just going to do that two more times, but each one's going to get a little smaller. So again, start light so you know that you have an arc you like. Do that sort of half moon semi-circle thing, okay? And then each one gets a little smaller. Okay, you don't want your top one to be teeny tiny because we do want to try and fit a face on there, but you do want to make sure you're leaving some space at the top because we want to add a hat. So just try and figure that out. And if you make a little mistake, it's because you're drawing light, it'll be fine. We can kind of hide it later. So just real lightly mark out those three partial circles. None of them are complete until you have this basic body of a snowman. And then we're going to start shading it. So we're going to add values. Values are lights and darks, and that's what makes something look three-dimensional because of the way shadows and highlights are created. So this is sort of a backwards way in drawing in that we're not actually drawing the shadows. The color of the paper will be our shadow. So we're just adding highlights. Normally it's opposite. If you're working on white paper, you uh, add your shadows because your paper's white, and that's your highlight, but we're doing it kind of backwards today. So the way I'm adding this highlight is I'm pressing hard and I'm putting a lot of this oil pastel onto the top edge of this sphere. The sphere is a three-dimensional circle. Okay, I'm getting a nice bright outer layer right along that edge. And then what I'm going to start doing is as I move in towards the center or the bottom of this sphere, I'm going to start pressing lighter. Now oil pastels are messy. You can see I just left a little streak there. So that's actually a good lesson that if your oil pastel is messy, you might want to get a separate sheet of paper to clean it off on. Um, but oil pastels are nice because they do mix, so we could kind of layer over this to kind of hide it. And you know what? If you ever made a snowman, I'm sure it's gotten dirt and twigs and stuff on it before. So it wouldn't be that crazy to have a little bit of a dirty snowman. So you can see as I'm moving in, the white is less bright because I'm pressing a lot lighter. And then by the time I get to this bottom corner, I can kind of just leave it the color of the paper. It's better to go too light at first because you can always add more, but once it's on there, it's a lot harder to take away. So go through one round of pressing hard, moving in, lightening it up, and you can always add more if you need to. Um, if you'll notice my hand, I'm not moving straight up and down. I'm not moving straight side to side. I'm moving in an arc. I'm following the shape of the circle. That's another way to look at make it look more three-dimensional and realistic. Okay? So you're going to repeat this, repeat, this process, ugh, repeat this process three times, one for each circle. So once you think you've got the first one done, um, move on to the next one. If you're not sure if it's good enough or if it's done yet, you can still move on and go back to it later. So don't sit there and keep working it. Um, if you think you got it or if you think maybe you got it, just move on to the next one. So just keep in mind with these second and third circles, they're smaller, so you're going to need to fade a little quicker. So make sure that outer edge is nice and bright, press nice and hard, and then quickly start to just lighten up your touch. Do not press nearly as hard. You can see my hands are pushing hard into this paper because the pressure and the oil pastels are kind of sticky-ish. It's going to want to slide your paper around. So make sure you're holding down on it so it's not sliding around on the table. Okay. So again, you're trying to create that fade of light to dark or bright to, <laughs> bright to dull. Okay. Like I said, if you're not sure, you can always move on. You can come back to it at any point. So there's my snowball number two. 
and then snowball number three. And we're gonna keep this theme of shading and adding highlights across everything we do here. So when we make his hat, we're gonna add highlights. When we make his scarf, we're gonna make sure we add a highlight or a shadow, depending on what colors you choose. Same thing with his twig arms. Everything's gonna be hit with that highlight. Okay. I like to get some white on almost all of it. It's just sometimes it's just like a little dusting. That way we know it's not disappeared. It's just the snow has a little shadow on it. You can also hold it on its side if that helps you to get a really light kind of scraping of white on there. Okay. All right. So there are my three snowballs. Okay. Before I add the face, normally whenever I draw something, I try not to get into any super detailed parts until I have all the essential parts in. So the face I feel like is the tiniest detail. So I'm going to save that for last. I'm going to move on to the hat next. So the hat really, you can choose whatever color you want. Um, I'm going to make it green this time. So what you want to do now is we want to make sure the hat looks also like it's three dimensional, like it's wrapping around its head. So what we're going to do is we're going to make, think of it sort of like a hat, a partial moon shape. So you're going to start, you're going to start in the top section of the head. So you're not all the way at the bottom, maybe a little bit more, about halfway down towards the top. And you're just going to start at the corner. You're going to come out, not too high. And then you're just going to follow around, follow the curve that the head is already taking, and then come down to a point there. Okay, so that's like the first fold of the hat. Okay, so just so it's not too confusing, you can go ahead and color that in now, but then we're still going to add one more layer to this hat. So this is like one of those winter hats that you roll up at the bottom. And then you have the option if you want to add the little ball on top or if you want to make it long like a Santa hat. Those are all creative choices you can make on your own. Okay, so we have this sort of, you know, if you turn it to high size, sort of like a, a half moon shape, a crescent moon. Okay, then what you're going to do is you're going to start a little bit in. Okay, not right at the edge, move in a little bit. And you're going to do like another one, another one of those half moon shapes. Okay. Now, before I color that in, I'm going to add a little highlight to that so that I can make sure I keep the two sections separate. So I'm just going to add my white, and I'm going to layer it right on top. You can see it kind of mixes with the green and creates this little highlight along the top edge of the hat. Okay, now I can have those two sections separate a little bit. I'm going to color that in with green. It's important with oil pastels that you kind of try and find the point the best you can. They're thick. Sometimes it's hard to color with them neatly, neatly. But if you take your time and find your edge, change the way you hold it occasionally. Okay? And same thing. So, you know, assuming there's sunshine up here, we're going to have highlights right at the top of this section of the head also. Okay? So along with highlights, we can also um, now start to talk about adding shadows. So shadows will exist anywhere where the light is blocked or when anything curls around or it's hidden underneath something. So where this curls around his head, I'm adding just a couple little very gentle swipes of black. I am not pressing hard because black is super strong. So press light, add a couple swipes, and that will add a little bit. You can see a shadow about where it curls around. And then I'll add a little bit of a shadow at the base of this other part of the hat too. All right. So there's that. Now if you wanted to give this a little puff ball on top, um, you could, and you could do whatever color you wanted. You could do green and red. You could make it white. If you are going to make it white, then I do definitely suggest adding some little gray shadow lines in there also. There's that little puff ball at the top. Okay. All right. So now, um, I think another good thing to help this look more like a, you know, a snowman is to add a scarf to it. So that might be a little tricky for you to, um, kind of draw in. So it could be a solid colored stuff, start, scarf. It could be a striped scarf. Um, I'll make mine green and red, Christmas colors. So I'm going to real lightly, just enough so I can see it, I'm going to draw kind of a long rectangle that follows. It's a curvy one because it's following the shape of the snowman. It follows along that top ball of the snowman. Okay. Thin kind of curvy rectangle. And then because it's looped and tied around, we're going to have another kind of loose rectangle. Maybe we'll make it curvy like it's blowing in the wind. Okay. Then all I'm going to do is I'm making mine striped, so I'm just dividing it up into sections. Again, very lightly. 
as evenly as you can. And then one at a time, I'll start coloring in those sections.